All right, guys, welcome back. So we have a bit of an update towards our tier list here. We have three new characters, and of course, we have just their impact on the game. So it's definitely going to change up the tier list. Characters are going to be going up, and characters will be going down. So let's probably start off with ranking our characters first, and then we'll move in towards ranking or changing the positioning of some characters. But uh, before we do that, let's talk about today's sponsor, Marvel Strike Force. As some of you may know, but I spend a lot of my time consumed by the Marvel Universe. So when Marvel Strike Force reached out to me to do a little ad read, I actually wanted to give him a fair try. And I played the game and I gotta say, I really liked it. Marvel Strike Force is a dynamic squad-based RPG that allows you to build a team of five. Whether you want to build a full team of heroes or build a full team of villains like the Sinister Six, you have full freedom to build your dream team. Through the course of playing, you'll recruit new heroes and villains such as Iron Man, Venom, and even Wolverine. And to reward the new players, Spider-Man, Deadpool 4, Captain America, or all three within the first 30 days just by playing the game. On screen now, and oh, it's a link description, you can scan my QR code and now give you access towards free characters such as Agatha Harkness, only available during the month of October. You don't have much time left. Marvel Strike Force has a ton of game modes and an ever-evolving meta that keeps your whole roster relevant from both a hero and villain campaign, Blitz, Arena, there's also Alliance War, a massive weekly alliance battle, there's also Raids and also a Cosmic Crucible where you do go head-to-head -head against players in a tournament. By far the best part about the game is the team building since characters often possess unique abilities that boost up their teammates, especially those from the same faction like the Avengers, the X-Men, assembling a well-balanced team where each character's strengths amplifies those of their allies is key to mastering Marvel Strike Force. To keep the free rewards coming and to celebrate this spooky season, players can redeem the promo code Halloween to get their free 100 shards of Zombie Iron Man, 600k gold, 480L2 trainer modules. There is a lot more to this game such as customizing and maxing out your characters. So if you're interested in Marvel Strike Force, don't forget to use my link or scan my QR code and download the game now. So yeah, big shout out towards Marvel Strike Force. I, I don't really do sports ships on this channel. I've only ever done two. This is my second one. I actually genuinely do like the game. So let's move it in towards our tier list. Now, first, we'll start off with ranking our characters because I think it's probably each one to do here. And uh, Derriere, instant S tier. I mean, if you lot play PP in the last, like, you know, two, three weeks now, I guess a month she's been out for, she is definitely an S tier character. Just her stats as a character is just insane. Like, look at her defense and HP. Bear in mind, Esteros is a tank character. And, like, she's got similar stats towards him. And he's a, she's a DPS character. They definitely had a bias when it came towards her. But, you know, her targeting support characters and, you know, running to the back line. Her actual ultimate can, like, TP a little bit towards the back line. Getting that movement. Cutting that distance a little bit. A big AoE nuke as well. Getting 30% extra attack and, like, what is it? 20, like, 20% speed boost whatever it is for your attack speed and her attack speed is 104 it's already naturally higher than most characters in the game like they they clearly love this character and yeah for pvp she's a must-have literally if i had to like rank in like order i'd say she's the best second best character in the game i think so i don't know i mean obviously type advantage matters a little bit but you get so much use out of her in pvp she could even be classed as the best pvp character and when it comes towards pve content she's also very good as well like they say you get that attack buff she has such super fast attack speed she gets behind the boss which sometimes can distract the boss to where they waste a lot of the aoe skills onto her rather than your whole team that's just something you can't really control but something you definitely appreciate as well and yeah when it comes towards dps's she's far better than mediolus and like everything just works as a character moving on towards merlin merlin a little bit of a newer character but a little bit boring. Like, all she does is increase crit chance. Like, the, the buff removal, yeah, it's helpful. And to be fair, I actually do get some use out of it. But, like, you don't really try too much. And she's not doing damage. I mean, she can deal damage because this actual exterminate ray can reach the back line a little bit. And I noticed a few of my runs, to be honest with you lot, because I have got full attack on too early. Like, she sometimes, like, Escalon dies too early or something happens in the game that's just very, very weird. Then, at least in PvP, right? She can get some decent damage. I don't mind the character, just not as flashy if you compare, you know, our last releases with obviously, you know, Escanor, Golfar, even obviously Derriere. Just very, very boring, but still a very, very good character. Definitely going to go into A tier. There's nothing bad about her. That 20% crit chance is insane. Works towards obviously Escanor, Barn, King. Works towards obviously, you know, Derriere as well. The only reason why King is higher is because I do value crit damage. Well, not really crit damage, but you get the... 
the actual attack buff and the crit damage buff where merlin is just doing crit chance and then the knockback which sometimes is actually kind of broken right now in like normal boss fights to where the ai kind of gets messed up a little bit and dolphin once he starts running around the whole field if you saw my little review on her, you saw what I mean about it. They still haven't fixed it, annoyingly. But yeah, I do very much appreciate the Merlin. And then for Esther Rosa, now he just came out and he is really, really good in PvP. Like, if you used him, like, I just do one little game right now, you'll see, like, the reflections. He makes a big impact on the game when it comes to PvP, right? Because everyone just reflects. Okay, we're kind of hiding it. But you can see all reflections pop up a little bit and you can see his damage. Like, he, for a, a good chunk of it, he's doing pretty decent damage for a tank character. And he does tank a bit. Like, he's not going to be the best tank in terms of, like, tanking. He's not going to be the best tank in terms of, like, tankiness when it comes to, like, him versus Delgado. But you don't need to tank as much when you're just getting a free 400 million damage for free. Estrosa is very, very good when it comes to PvP. And in PvE, I'm using him more as well because... You know, he actually is tanky, and we've kind of moved away a little bit from single target damage dealers. You notice that right now in PvP, there's a lot of AoE characters, Escanor, Deberi's running around the field a little bit. Even when it comes to those actual boss fights, every single boss fight, the Nighthood boss fight, they all have, you know, big AoE skills. They, they're going to kill your backline. A lot of times when I bring Delgelo, and the only reason why I used Delgelo a lot of times before was because he had that actual taunt ability, which is what Estorosa has and happens every five seconds where I think Delgelo has a chance to do it. Like, I generally do not see a reason why I wouldn't be using Estorosa, at least right now for what I am at in the game. I feel like you could probably get a bit more out of Delgelo when you're progressing through the game because the early game when you're ranking through a lot of the story mode, uh, especially even during the Nightmare, you know, you will need that single target sponger. And I think Delgelo can be that. And it's definitely more reliable free to play option, which is why Delgado is still staying in the S tier. It's just, well, for Esarosa, I think I put him in the SS. I think so. I think when we talk about tanks, he is the best tank. That's the reason why we look right here. Monspi, obviously, he's just goaded, obviously. He gets the energy restoration. But like, Gloxnia is the best healer, so he is in the best support character. Go for best universal supporter. He's in the SSS tier. So I think for Estorosa, I'm still putting him in there. I have no reason why I wouldn't. You know, if you, I think if you look at our S tier, we still have, you know, Deanne and Draw. And I don't think Estorosa is on the same level as them. Like, you get a lot more out of Estorosa. So I think, if anything, I just have to put him in the SS tier. Maybe there's just too many characters getting in here. We might have to make an, you know, SS plus and put, like, only Escanor because Escanor is just that broken, right? So yeah, that is my rankings for the three new characters. Maybe a bit too preemptive early for Estorosa because you know you're not going to use them in night bosses but you generally don't use tanks in night bosses unless the specific tank you want to bring is something like draw who needs to imply the infection for example you know going forward and especially in like tower trials content which is very very hard especially on the hard difficulty bring a song like Estorosa has made me play for a lot more content that I wouldn't normally be able to do because Escanor can't carry through all of it so he's a good substitute towards that little uh full green team for the hard difficulty yeah like, I just really really love the character very fun as well like I'm, I'm glazing him a lot here but if you've gotten to a six star and you've you know used him a little bit you've, like he actually is one of the funnest characters in the game and you, I just love seeing that reflect buffs come up every single time so now let's talk about characters to uh remove and go down Honestly, Bon, I'm not getting much use out of him now because there's a lot of characters. You want a lot of AOE characters, but you know when you do need Bon for like a single target DPS, and you're seeing that right now in our little pumpkin raid boss, Bon is still so good, and I use him in all my other bosses. Like he's he's not moving down, but I just want to talk about him because I feel like he can probably move down later on arthur we're now going to move down the only reason why arthur was in s here was because of that crit chance buff towards barn which was very very much needed but now that we have merlin and it now just universal you can use it on red characters and the sim team you're li literally just, i find myself not really ever using arthur other than maybe buffing the crit chance for Guild Frost. And for that reason, we're now moving Guild Frost up. This guy is just insane in this game. PvP is a must-have. You can't go out using him. In a lot of PvE content, you can actually use him. He's not bad. Like, he's for some reason, his crit damage is just insane. I'm using him right now in the Pumpkin Boss. He's literally my main damage dealer, which you can't actually see right now. You know, Tower Trials, he is literally the best character. And he's free to play a unique character. PvP, he's doing a lot of damage. Like, I just don't see why you wouldn't use him in a lot of content uh, other than specific content like the Night of Bosses where you have to bring you know specific characters your team is very restricted but yeah we're now moving up our uh, actual go for us gonna move gloxing down not because he's bad or anything like that it's just i feel like the ss is getting a bit too full and while yes gloxing is probably the best healer do you need a healer in every content no i'm 
more or less kind of going away from healing a lot of times now. The cleanse is helpful, and to fair, I still use it in PvP. I just feel like, you know, you don't need him in every single team. Maybe I'm just being a bit harsh right now. But yeah, I feel comfortable with him being like a top tier S character. And again, for my S tier unique characters, I think those are kind of fine. You know, Kane is still very, very good. I really like him in AV content. And Walio is, you know, still a free to play substitute towards a tank character if you need that mortality. But, you know, a lot of people are bypassing it now by having a lot of, you know, buff removals or they have the AOE skills. But I still think they're good. And honestly, I was using them up until S Dorosa came out, basically. I was always switching between him and also Dorgello. And then moving in towards A tier. Here. honestly i'm even Diana up there's just so much use right now with that petrification i have been using her more than i thought i actually would just because every boss that comes out and you're seeing it right now with the little uh, ghost guy like everyone is immune to every you know crowd control but petrification and that petrification and the reason why i got a high score on this raid boss was because of the yan because the yan what she does do is be a good tank a little bit but also as well it is petrified which means they can't use skill for two turns and that is so important in knighthood bosses when it needs it you know the silver demon which has now been increased so you actually will need this the yan as well you can use her in obviously pve content I mean, you won't use her in PvP, but like tower trials are used a little bit. And you know, in boss fights, petrifying to where you get that two seconds of like free damage, but also lowering the critical resistance. So you follow up with like a big barn ultimate, you get a big crit. Your love and life. I really, really do like this, Diane. I actually prefer her way more than the actual uh, smaller one. So yeah, she is moving up towards S tier. Honestly, Elect and Elaine, I'm moving them down. The reason why they were up before was because, yeah, they are uh, actually, you know, buffed up Melee. She buffed up, obviously, Eskinor. The crit chance, the critical resistance lower. It was nice, right? But now we have Merlin in the game. There's just no reason. Like, especially Elet. Elet is literally just a worse version of Merlin. Merlin just literally power crept her so, so much now. You can still use her, and I use her a little bit in Tower Trials because she does have some AOE skills on her ultimate. She can buff from even I have had some use out of that in Tower Trials. So she's not completely useless. It's just I have no reason to use her now. Uh, Melascula, we're going to move up because now, obviously, with Derriere and Esterosa getting some crit damage is pretty nice. And she's probably going to move up even more later on. I don't know. That accuracy buff is very bad on the ultimate. But once we start getting more commandments and we get like a Zeldus or, or a 10 command Meteorus, I can see her moving up again. Uh, but I think all commandments should be in like A to S because they just have more use in the game now. Uh, I think I'm probably move up. Uh, Melee, I think I'm going to move up to... I really like Melee now. We, we found out, especially now with Merlin, she he does get affected by the actual, you know, Merlin buff and King buff. So he's got access to all the two best buffers in the game. He's got some AOE as well. I like him. I'm going to I'm gonna keep him in ST. He's like a free-to-play option for like a good, unique character. And, and right now, like in Brawl, where you have to bring like three different teams, I'm using him as like one of my main DPSs because he works in the Sin team. Atra, I'm probably going to move up to. Really, really like his damage. Was really impressive him in Tower Trials. He actually is carrying me the, probably the most a little bit because his he just does so much as well. But like his actual ultimate has like a two meter radius from like the target he hits. And it just does a lot damage like i think whenever i come towards bringing a blue character unless i want to bring galand or if i need to bring galand he is by far the best blue so i want to kind of put some emphasis onto him because if you don't have a good blue character he is probably the best one to go to we're gonna move gelder up once again more reliable crits now with merlin dreyfus getting a big buff up to a tier i know right he had no use in the game but now with tower trials and hard mode i have gotten a lot of use out of him and to be honest would i play without him Maybe, eventually I would have, but I do appreciate his actual buff skill, his debuff skill, where he does do a massive Milky Way laser beam towards the back line, hitting a lot of characters and lowering their critical resistance, followed up by a big Derriere ultimate. I actually really do like Rafer, so we're going to move him up. So yeah, I think I am pretty comfortable with this tier list. Like the SS, you're using them everywhere, basically. S tier, also good substitutes. You're going to be using a lot more as well. And for unique characters, you know, best red unique character, best green unique character, best blue unique character. We don't have a light type because there is no real light type DPS other than like Arden. But when Gilfrost exists, just, yeah, he's way, way too good. And the best tanks for substitutes as well, you have obviously Dogello and uh, Wylo. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this tier list, I think. M maybe move Janet down. I think so. I, I think she was like a little bit meta a little bit during like a few, like a season or two ago. Before I think we had Derriere. Because like Eskinor and like the buff removal meta. 
But now I think with Esther Rosa, you're like, yeah, I think I'm going to move it down. So, guys, that is going to wrap up the video. Let me know what you think of this tier list. Where would you rank certain characters if you think I ranked them in the wrong place? And, of course, as well, shout out again to us, Mother Strike Force. Make sure to use my link in the description if you plan to download the game. It will help me out and, obviously, the, the, the channel as well. So, guys, thank you for watching and, uh, yeah.